Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to The Contrarian. Today I'll be talking about why we're probably near the bottom of this very short-term correction that we're seeing and why it's probably not the beginning of a much more drawn-out type of correction. And it seems to be that's what most people are saying right now is this is a time to be cautious. You know, the market may have peaked for the year or something like that. But I really don't think that's likely. If anything, I think that this, you know, the last couple weeks, the pullback we've had is kind of reminiscent of what occurred during the April, May kind of time period earlier this year, where we saw a similar sharp pullback, um, you know, mostly concentrated in the most kind of overblown things, the things that had rallied the most, pulled back the most. So that was the semiconductors and big tech and other things like that, that had, you know, performed really well in the beginning of 2024. And then after that pullback, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20%, some of those names, they rallied another, you know, 50%, some of them. So, I mean, um, you know, looking back at April and May, um, there was very similar sentiment right there that, oh no, this, you know, the market just peaked in March. We need to be very cautious. Um, this is the beginning of a much larger downturn. You know, we need to be cautious now. I'm just seeing a lot of that same sentiment right now out in the market with regards to this pullback that we've had the last couple weeks. And, you know, why have we pulled back? Um, you know, the market, the news media at least, is attributing it to a lot of the political uncertainty and just everything that we're seeing in that landscape right now. And, you know, while that's maybe playing into it a little bit, um, I just don't see that as being the major reason why the market's pulling back, actually, you know, I think it just reached a point where it kind of needed almost a reset of the sentiment, the hype that people had. Um, you know, you can kind of analyze it through the lens of psychology, and I think it makes a lot more sense to do so. Um, you know, looking at something like uh, semiconductors or the big tech stocks, um, even, you know, recently the small cap stocks had rallied um, you know, really well the prior couple weeks prior to the pullback that we've had. Um, you know, and then there was a, a kind of reversal of that sentiment. There was a, a questioning of uh, at least the small caps right now. There's a questioning in terms of is this a lasting breakout on the Russell 2000? You know, is it just kind of a, um, you know, extraneous example that is not going to continue? you know, in the re remainder of the year. So, um, you know, what I'm saying is, even though there's a lot of sudden skepticism surrounding the stock market, um, and just the market generally, I think, it's not just the stock market, there's um, bonds have even sold off a little bit in the last couple of weeks as well. There's been some skepticism surrounding perhaps the Fed's upcoming uh, rate cuts or not. Um, so maybe that's playing into it a little bit. The market's wondering what the Fed will do. Um, you know, but in reality, um, does the Fed make a huge impact on the bond market as a whole? You know, kind of on the short end of the curve, they definitely do. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it really has to do with the, rem you know, the remainder of the bond market, which is most of the bond market not controlled by the Fed. Um, and the bond market you know, has every reason to rally at this point, I think, with, you know, just how much the economy has seemingly slowed recently. There's a lot of indicators out there that the, you know, concerns regarding inflation and a resurgence of inflation probably should be taken off the table at this point. Um, you know, looking at employment, numbers coming in a lot cooler than they have been in prior months. GDP as well, slowing down expectations for GDP, um, you know, and inflation, CPI, PPI, PCE as a whole we'll really need to wait and see with that. But um, the other two indicators are indicating that you know, inflation is probably a, in, in the rearview mirror at this point in terms of being a primary concern for the Fed, which should allow them to um, consider cutting rates at this point. And if they're really, you know, on the forefront of that, they will um, you know, preeminently act on that. They won't do so, um, you know, reactively. They'll actually, 
um, anticipate something like that. So, you know, what is, what is all this saying? Um, you know, even though it's probably a more risky environment, I'm not, you know, providing advice in any way, but myself, I'm not, um, I don't see reason to be out of the market at this point. I don't see a reason for the stock market to continue much longer in its downtrend. If anything, I think it's probably, um, you know, reaching the bottom here pretty soon and it will resume to the upside after that, I think. Um, but you know, we will really need to wait and see with all that, you know, what are the best performers in that? I do think, um, the small caps, especially about a month ago, I made a couple videos on the Russell 2000 small caps, why I was rotating a lot of the gains I had in the semiconductor space into those. I do remain extremely bullish on small caps at this point. Um, but most other things as well, I think will perform as well in the upcoming uh, rally. Um, so I do think, you know, something like what David Hunter is saying is melt up thesis. I think it has been playing out. I think it will um, play out eventually. So, um, you know, maybe the timing's a little bit different than what he thinks, but I uh, overall definitely agree with him there. Um, I'll be talking with him in a couple weeks. I'd love to know if you have any questions uh, you would like for me to ask David Hunter. Uh, I hope you found this video valuable, and I hope to see all of you again at some point.